Welcome to our review on electric current. So the first thing we actually need to know is what we mean by the phrase current. So whenever we're talking about current in terms of physics, then we're talking about the rate of flow of charged particles. And in the case of this, we're talking about electrons. Now, in order to actually make that current flow, we actually need two important things. First of all, we need something like a cell, a battery or a power supply. And the second thing is that we need the circuit to be complete. So if there's any gaps in the circuit, then current won't flow. One other point to note at this point is that when we measure the current anywhere in a single closed loop, then that current will be the same no matter where you place your ammeter. As with a lot of things in science, then we do use sometimes easier models in order to represent things you can't physically see. So in the little diagram that you've got in front of you there, we've got two people with a loop of rope between them. Now, what we actually find is that the person that's going to be pulling the rope is going to represent our battery. So they're the ones actually moving this around. The actual movement of the rope itself is the current. And then the other person standing there just holding the rope, that one is the person who represents a circuit component. So while we can't actually see electrons moving in a circuit, using models allows us to actually represent these things in a way that you can observe, which sometimes makes it a little bit easier to understand. If we have a look at the circuit diagram at the bottom of the screen, what we can see is we've got two different things labelled on. You've got the electron flow, which goes from the negative terminal of our battery round to the positive. And then we've got the conventional current direction, which goes from the positive to the negative. Now, the reason we've got the conventional current direction going in the opposite direction to the electrons is because before we knew that electrons existed, then that's how scientists thought the current actually went. So when we're talking about the conventional current, it always goes in the opposite direction to the electron flow. So from the positive to the negative terminal. The next bit we come on to is the first of our P3 calculations that we need to remember. So the first calculation we've got to actually remember and to use on our actual exam is charge flow, which is measured in coulombs, is the current in amps times by the time in seconds. Now, sometimes what we'll actually find is that we talk about incredibly small currents, at which point using amps wouldn't make sense. So instead of using amps, we use what's called milliamps, which is the same as obviously a thousand times smaller than an amp. Just like whenever we use the little prefix of milli, it's always a thousand times smaller than without the prefix. So if we have a look at the kind of question we can actually get asked about our charge flow, then we could get a question along these lines. Calculate the charge flowing in two minutes for a toy electric car that needs a current of 14 milliamps. Now, the first thing we have to do there is remember to convert into our standard units. So we can't use minutes or milliamps in our calculation. Otherwise, we're going to get the wrong answer on the exam paper. So the first thing to do is convert our minutes into seconds. So two minutes, hopefully we know, is 120 seconds with 60 seconds per minute. And then we convert our milliamps into amps. So 14 divided by 1000 gives us 0.014 amps. The next thing to do is substitute into our actual formula. So we know that charge flow is current times time. We know that our current is 1.4 times 10 to the minus 2 if we're using standard form or 0.014 if we're not. And then we're going to times that by our time in seconds, which was 120. So you put that into your calculator and you should get your answer of 1.68. And don't forget the units if they're not already provided in the question, in this case, coulombs with the capital C. The only way they could actually make any of these calculations more complex on the actual exam paper is to ask you to find a different subject of our equation. So as opposed to ask you to calculate the charge flow, they could ask you to find the current all the time. So the example I've given you here of calculate the current through the air in a lightning strike if a charge of 300 coulombs flows in 0.01 seconds, then quite clearly we need to rearrange to give current as the subject. Now you can do that using the good old triangle method or you can use your math skills just to rearrange normally. So if we have a look at what we've got in this one, we can see our charge is 300 coulombs. Our time is 0.01 seconds. None of the units actually need converting because they're in our standard units there. So all we do is we rearrange our equation to give us current is charge divided by time. 
substitute in the values we've been given and that gives us our answer of 30,000 amps.